Hey there, and welcome to my channel. My name is Crafty Kathy, and I'm the owner and creator of Kids Vintage Farmhouse in Chattanooga, Tennessee. And I'm so happy and thankful that you stopped in to craft and to spend a little time with me today. I have an extraordinary video for you guys today. We're gonna take some cheapo Dollar Tree eggs and we are gonna make them something beautiful. Something that you would be proud to put in your home decor. And all your family and friends are gonna be like, where did you buy that at? Also, if you haven't subscribed to my channel yet, what in this world are you waiting for? Hit that little red subscribe button and become a part of our family because we would love to have you. And if you would, please give me a big thumbs up because that really does help out the channel. And also, if you will just leave a comment, even if it's just an emoji, a heart or something. So let me know what you think about these projects. And without further ado of all of my blabbing, uh, let's jump in. And P.S. I totally forgot to mention, I'm having to edit today out here in my craft studio. And on the other side of this wall is my chicken coop. Well, Emo, the black chicken, is broody. That's when they think their eggs are gonna hatch, but they're never gonna hatch because I don't have roosters around to fertilize the eggs. So anyways, they act really weird over their eggs and they holler and squawk for weeks on end. It's a whole thing, I promise y'all. So I just didn't want anybody to think that somebody's murdering a hen around here. She's totally fine. She's just broody. <laughs> now let's get into this video. Lord, I thought I was the only hen around here that squawked too much. So we're going to start out with one of these giant Easter eggs. They're the plastic ones, and these are $1.25 from Dollar Tree. I got a candlestick from Dollar Tree, and then we are going to be working with the AB Studio. It is some beautiful rice paper that Miss Lori sent me from Milton's daughter. I'll let you know in just a minute how to get that rice paper if you want some. The first thing I'm going to do is use the Slick Stick by Dixie Belle. It's basically a primer. You put it on anything that is normally hard to paint, like plastic, glass, that type thing. And I did paint the inside of the egg just in case any of that green. I just didn't want that on my background. And I painted the top portion of the clear part of the egg. And this is just with one coat of it. And you see, it's kind of streaky, but it doesn't matter because it's just the primer. It's exactly what we're going to need. I'm going to use the DIY paint in the color called Beadboard. It is just a beautiful white color. I think it's beautiful. And for right now, this is the only sponge that I can find. And I definitely wanted white on the top of my egg. The reason being is I'm going to decoupage that beautiful picture on the top. And I always like to decoupage with a white background because it really makes it the image pop. And you see, I'm just going around and dabbing this. It's giving it a beautiful texture, which will lay down a little bit, but it's giving it just a perfect texture. And it also helps for that paint to stick onto that plastic really well, because a lot of the Dollar Tree items are notorious for not wanting to hold paint. Now, while my big egg is drying, I'm going to prep two more eggs. I have this medium-sized foam egg, and it came from Dollar Tree. It was $1.25. I'm just going to pull out the ribbon. Don't worry if it makes a pretty big-sized divot in the bottom because we're going to be sitting it up on its bottom. And then I have this smaller plastic egg, and it came from Dollar General. I believe it was a dollar or a dollar fifty for the one egg. It's an ornament, and that's why it was a little bit more expensive. I love using these. I'm just going to put a little bit of glue in the seams and close it up so it's not ever going to be open back up again. Now, don't worry if you put a little bit too much glue whenever you close it up. Just run your finger across it real quick and get that glue off there. Now, I also do that same thing by gluing the seams on that large egg whenever it fully dries. I don't feel that either of these eggs are going to need the slick stick. The smaller one probably could have used the slick stick, but 
I just decided against it. I thought I didn't need it. And I'm doing the exact same treatment on these two eggs. I'm using my sponge and that same color of beadboard. And I'm just gonna go around and give them just one good coat. I only did one coat over all of these pieces. Now that I'm editing and I'm looking at this large egg, I failed to mention that the only part that I colored with the beadboard is that top portion. That bottom portion still has only the slick stick on it because we're totally going to put a different color on there. So let's start off with this beautiful piece of decoupage paper. Now, if you've been around my channel for any length of time, you know that I don't like straight edges and I don't cut them with scissors at all. So what I'm gonna do, I started off with the water technique like I always do, where I squirt a little bit of water on my um, silicone mat and use a very stiff brush and kind of go around. But the AB Studio paper is so, it's easy to rip without like ripping big chunks out of it. And as I started tearing that, I remembered and I thought, I don't even have to use the water technique here. So I just went around and very slowly and carefully tore all of the pieces off. Now decoupaging a piece like this that is rounded the way that an egg is, is not hard to do. You just need to know what to do to make it work you do have to go around and make several rips in your paper because that's going to help it to lay down easier. Just trust me, that's the best thing that you can do there. And I try to be careful about, like I went between his ears instead of going right down in the middle of his ears and things like that around the flowers, around the little teacup. But I went all the way around this piece, you see, and I ripped pretty far in. I could have stood to even rip a little bit further, but I didn't want to rip my bunny picture. I wanted my bunny to lay perfectly flat on this egg and not be distorted. Now, when you're doing a piece this big, you can't help but to get a few little wrinkles, usually on the outside portions. That's just the way the ball bounces. Now, if you guys watch me decoupage, you know that I usually have no wrinkles at all, but when you do a big piece like this, don't feel like a big failure if you get some wrinkles. It's going to happen. We're going to use our DIY liquid patina. Now, it is a really good decoupage glue. I like it a lot better than I do Mod Podge because Mod Podge is thick and goopy, whereas the liquid patina is not. It's thinner, and it's easier for me to work with. I'm just going to do one half of the picture at a time. I'm used to using very, very little decoupage medium, very little liquid patina, so I put just a little bit down. It usually doesn't take much, but it was going to take a little bit more because if you'll look, this picture didn't even stick with that little bit that I put down. So I added some more, and like I said, we're going to do the top portion first. I'm going to speed it up just a little bit because I did work super, super slow to make sure that my cracks come together right without getting any wrinkles. If you do that, you're going to be way more successful. And you'll notice here, I paid attention to how I had like pulled my paper apart. You can see which piece kind of goes on the top and which should lay on the bottom. And that's what I did. I just was really careful with that. Now I'm gonna go ahead and put the bottom portion down. I start off in the middle because I want that bunny to be pristine. I don't want him to have any wrinkles. I want him to be absolutely perfect. Now, if you have to add a little bit more of the liquid patina, that's totally fine. It's not gonna hurt anything because for whatever reason, it was really needing a lot um, on this egg. And I'll just let you watch me how I go around and put the sides together. I will lay out like the, the flower here, and then I notice that that piece there needs to be ripped a little bit more to make it lay down easy. And that's just, you have to rip it. Don't worry, you're not even gonna know that it was ever ripped. When I first started doing this, I was scared to death that I was going to lose my piece of decoupage paper, but you won't. It's the only way to get it on a curved surface so that it's not going to 
you know, look crazy. And you'll notice too that I'm using like a sandwich bag to stick on my hands any kind of plastic, saran wrap, whatever you have, because you don't want to touch the decoupage paper too much. It's not as easy as napkins to rip, but it will rip. You have to go slow. You have to be careful and use some type of like a baggie or saran wrap to kind of help you iron out the wrinkles that are there. And that's kind of the way that I look at it. The heat from my finger and me rubbing it over those wrinkles is almost like I'm just ironing them out. And look at that. The bunny itself didn't have any wrinkles. He was really turning out. I was just really happy the way that he turned out. If you have to rip in a little bit more toward the center, it's perfectly fine. Whatever you've got to do to get it laid down correctly. You'll notice, like I said, the place that you see the most wrinkles is on the out, outer portion, but that's okay. And then when I got down to the bottom, that brush that I had used before, one of the bristles had gotten in the paint, and it made me so mad because I just tried to get it off there and it pulled the paint off. But that's okay because it's just crafting. Everything can be fixed. Just don't overreact and and just work slowly, and I promise you that you can do this too. I'm not sure if you can notice it yet, but like I was saying, you can't even see where you've torn the pieces when it's all said and done. Now, there were a few spots that had pretty big size wrinkles at this point, but I'm not fretting because I know for the most part that I can fix them. And also, it is a handmade item. Like I said, it's not going to be perfect, but it is so, so beautiful in the end. The biggest thing is just take your time and use that saran wrap or like I did, a plastic bag. And here I'm showing you where you can see that that one piece needs to be laid down first. You can just tell by the way that it ripped and you're going to lay that other piece down right on top of it. And look, you can't even tell that that piece was ever ripped. I promise you, your piece is gonna be so beautiful. Just have a little bit of faith in yourself and give yourself grace and you can do this. And I want to mention really quick, if you want to try out some of this decoupage paper or the IOD products or the DIY paint, a lot of the different things that you see me use on my channel, I get from Lori over at www.miltonsdaughter.com. And if you use the code CRAFTYCATHY10, you get 10% off your first order. Now, some restrictions may apply, but just ask Miss Lori for any help that you may need. And she is amazing at customer service and she will set you right up. Okay, on this part, I'm totally finished with the decoupage process for my bunny, and I'm just showing you guys, you know, that there are a few wrinkles, but it's very minimal. I grabbed the color called Skeleton Key by DIY Paint. It's one of my favorite gray colors. I'm trying to kind of match up that bluish gray background that's behind the bunny. Now I'm just gonna use this little like sponge dauber thing that I've got and I'm gonna start down at the bottom. I'm starting here in an area where I had chipped off the paint where I had tried to get that, br that bristle, that brush bristle out. 
And I'm just kind of going around the bottom. That way, if it's a total no, it's on the bottom and I can cover it up pretty easy. Now, it was pretty close, but I felt that it needed a more of a blue hue. So in order to mix this up, what I'm gonna do is just put a little bit in a little paper cup. I'm gonna put a little bit of my skeleton gray color, and I wasn't sure which blue that I needed to use. There's a new line of DIY paint, and it's called Painterly. Miss Lori sent me a bunch of the little samples so that I could just kind of try it out, see what I thought. Now, it's not a clay-based paint like the other, like the other DIY paint, and we're going to use this light blue color called Skylight. Now, at first, I just put a little bit in there, and it was swallowed up by the gray. So then I decided, okay, Kathy, you're going to need more blue and less gray. So I just kind of fooled around, and what I ended up doing was putting the gray that I had into that little dish that she gave me and stirring it around and checking that color out. So I eventually ended up with this color by using that whole little thing that she sent me called Skylight with just that very little bit of Skeleton Key and it made the perfect color. I used my little sponge dauber and I started down on the bottom part again and I just kind of started dabbing it around and it made the most beautiful blue color I wish that DIY had this exact blue color, but it's just kind of like a bluish gray. That's about the best way that I could describe it. It is a beautiful bluish gray color. So I went around with that little sponge and made sure that I got it all over my egg. Now, every little bit, whenever I would start to put stuff on, I would realize that I didn't seal the very bottom portion all the way, and that's all I'm doing right here. I just put a little bit of my liquid patina on my brush and sealed that part down really well so I could just kind of use my little sponge around it to see what I've come up with there. Here, I'm just demonstrating to you guys how I take the color and my little sponge and how I work it around that picture to make it look as though it was one piece all along. Now, here I used my little hand sander because I didn't want my picture to go beyond that portion where the egg closed. It was just personal preference. So, I just used the sander and just very, very lightly went along the side of that and peeled it off. I do want to frame out this beautiful bunny, and I have these pieces that I make up ahead of time, and so I made up these a few weeks ago, but as you see, they're made of resin, and they're kind of straight. I want them to be able to curve a little bit so that I can mold them into the shape that I want them to be, so I'm going to use the heat from my dryer to create that process. When I do that, I just blow dry them on the front and the back, and I very, very slowly and carefully just kind of manipulate them to shape them the way that I want them to be. Now, for time's sake, I did not have the time to use the tight bond quick and thick like I normally do. So right now, and this is the first time I've ever done this, I'm just using regular hot glue to put these on. Now, I don't know if it's uh, the reason why we don't use hot glue on these. I guess it's just a whole thing. It may be easier for it to pop off over time. I'm really not sure to tell you the truth, but for this video, I went ahead and just put it on with my hot glue. But if you are going to do this and you want it to absolutely last, that tight bond wood glue would be your best step. You put it on there and leave it on at least, you know, a couple hours, like four or five hours, and probably best if you do overnight. But you see, it's very easy to go and just kind of manipulate it, shape it the way that I want it to be and where I want it to go, and I just place those on the side. 
This particular mold all came from an IOD mold called Dainty Flourishes. It's one of my favorites, and I often use this certain mold to go around things and frame things. Now, at this point, I still wasn't 100% sure what I wanted to do on the rest of my egg, like to frame it out. So, I mixed up some of my amazing crafting resin. It only takes 10 minutes for it to set. And I'm going to use that resin in these two IOD molds. The ones with the B on it is called Laurel. And then the other one at the bottom where you see the heart is called Cameo. Now, I just wanted to keep my options open and just make several of these smaller designs on here so I could kind of put it together in my head what I wanted. Now, right here, I'm using the exact same pieces that I already have on my little bunny. It's just a small portion of it. These are rigid enough that if you just need a small piece off of it, you can literally just snap it and it will break. And that's what I've done here. And then I'm just heating it up with my little blow dryer so that I can place them exactly where I want them to go and maneuver them exactly how I want them maneuvered. Now it's been 10 minutes and I just want to show you what the resin molds look like. I have all these beautiful little shapes to choose from and guys I'm just telling you nothing can compare to the quality of the IOD molds. You can use a cheaper mold like maybe from Amazon or whatever but you just will never get that beautiful quality that you get from the IOD stamps and molds. I absolutely love this little crown. I had to put that on my bunny rabbit and I think it gave it something extra. And then I took these little round pieces. They look like jewels to me. I placed one on the bottom and I placed one on the top of my bunny. So now that I have all these beautiful pieces of mold, on my little bunny rabbit, I'm going to have to paint them too. So I just took kind of like a flat paintbrush because these have a lot of intricate areas that you've got to work with. You've got to get inside of them and on top of them and around them. And I definitely didn't want to get any of that blue color on the picture itself. So I have this really, really sped up but it was tedious and it took me a little bit to color all of it without getting it everywhere. And I went all the way around and just painted everything really nicely. And now that I have all of my molds painted, I had to go back and go ahead and finish painting the rest. I used the sponge on that top portion of the egg, but on the bottom, I just used my simple paintbrush and painted it. After sitting back and looking, I had to add this little jewel. It made the little bunny rabbit look like he had like a necklace on or she had a necklace on. And I just think this is so beautiful and so French country that I had to add it. Here I'm grabbing my rub and buff in the beautiful color called gold leaf, but I was actually getting way ahead of myself. I was ready to go ahead and put this on, and I started to, and then I was like, oh no, I haven't sealed my paint yet. I'm going to use Big Top, which is a great sealer. You know that DIY paint is clay-based, but it does have to be sealed. So I went around my whole piece with just a simple paintbrush and sealed it up with Big Top. And then I dried it down with the dryer. I hope you guys are okay with me going a little bit slower than what I normally do in my videos. I know that this one project is taking a while, but I just wanted to slow it down for a second so that I could show you up close, step by step, how to make these beautiful eggs and really to decoupage in general. I mean, these rules that I'm using that I've showed you about the decoupage is how I do all of my decoupage. I just take it slow, you know, and use a few simple rules and it will be successful every time. So here I'm just going through and using that beautiful gold leaf rub and buff. I'm going all around my piece and taking my time. And as you can tell, my favorite way of putting this on is with my finger. 
and I feel that right now is also a great place for me to tell you that if you are enjoying this video, I would love for you to hit that like button. That's the big thumbs up button because it really, really helps me out on my channel. Also, if you would leave some type of comment and don't forget to subscribe if you haven't subscribed to my channel yet. I would love to have you. If this is the first time you've ever been here, I do a lot of decoupage on this channel. It's probably my favorite form of crafting. I don't do only decoupage, but I do a pretty good amount of it. I absolutely love decoupage. Now, you don't always need to use your finger when you're using this gold leaf rub and buff. There are certain times when you're going to need a brush, and I found myself needing that so I could get kind of in the side areas here. And also, I really just don't know when to stop, or when to stop talking. going to work on that medium sized egg and this is another one of the AB Studios decoupage paper. I absolutely love the little bunny that has the pink and the blue bows on and they also have one of these in a bigger size like an 8 by 10 size. So I just went around and I'm just tearing the pieces off just like I did on the other one because remember with this paper we don't necessarily need to use the water method. And I'm just going to go around and do the exact same things that I did on the first one. It's just a repetitive process, really. And it, you do the exact same things when you're decoupaging. I went around and I gave my little rips in there. And I'm going through with my liquid patina. And it took much less liquid patina for this one. I'm not really sure why that first egg, you know, just kind of sucked it up. But since this is a smaller image, it was also easier to decoupage. Even though I had ripped it, it was very easy to put the pieces back together and to get a good seamless uh, decoupage without a whole lot of wrinkles. Now, if you'll notice, I did speed this one up significantly more than I did the first one, you know, because that first one, like I said, it's repetitive. We're doing the exact same things. And I also noticed that with this foam egg, you know, the wrinkles actually kind of looked good on it. It's not to say that I wanted to give it a whole bunch of wrinkles, but when I came out with one or two little wrinkles, it actually looked like it was part of the egg because of the texture that was on this egg. So it was very easy to decoupage this piece. I decided for this egg, I wanted to go with a bubblegum pink color. And I'm going to use another one of those new um, colors that Miss Lori sent me from the line called Painterly and it's called Confection and I'm just going to go all around my little bunny do the exact same thing I'm just kind of framing it in and just going all around with my little sponge just like I did the other one and I did want to mention that the little flower pot that I showed you just a moment ago that had the little flowers on it and it had the bunny feet on the bottom, I found that at the Goodwill bins. And I probably paid like, I don't know, maybe 50 cents for it or something. Everything at the bins goes by how, you know, how much it weighed. Now here, I'm just taking my DIY white wax and I just kind of placed it all around on this beautiful egg. I waited till it was dry, by the way, before I did this. And I just put it all over my egg. And then I went back with a dry rag and just very lightly wiped it off. I really liked that powdery pink color that it gave. 
I wasn't really sure what I was going to do on the bottom of this, but what I ended up doing is cutting a floral that I had from Walmart into pieces. It's a little small, like, pink flowers, and I just cut it into pieces and put my little flowers in the middle and just put the leaves out around the bunnies. I ended up painting that little flower pot with the color beadboard and then I took the gold leaf rub and buff on my finger and went over all the little embossed flowers to kind of accentuate that. I added some Spanish moss and a couple of the little mushrooms that are out at Dollar Tree right now. Now we're moving right along to our last one, and I have one more of the decoupage paper from AB Studios, and I just think that this one picture with the rabbit is perfect. I was going to use something different, like a little duckling or a rooster, but since the other two had the bunnies on it, I just felt like we would go with the egg and bunny theme. I mean, why not? at this point. Why not? Because I wanted to save the little roosters and the ducks because I can use them when Easter's over with. So, I went through and I did the exact same things where I am ripping down the picture. And since this picture was so much smaller, I wasn't sure if I was going to have to rip it too much. So, I waited on this one. I did the exact same thing where I started off in the middle to make sure that bunny, you know, didn't have any wrinkles on him. And it did come down to me having to make a very few little small rips. They are so tiny, you can barely even see them. I think I did two on the right side and two on the left side. And then I just tried to work out my wrinkles the best that I could. And of course, I wanted to frame out this little bunny too. And I started using a mold, a little cheap one that I had got from Amazon. And it just wasn't cutting it. I didn't like the way that it came out. It just didn't look right. And at this point, I was just tired and I just wanted to get the project finished. So I said, I'm going with my handy dandy IOD that's never going to let me down. So I went and used the laurel again because I really like these little uh, flowers that go around. I think they're perfect for being able to frame out my bunny rabbit and I added those on. And this time I did use my tight bond quick and thick. Now, when I first had this piece put on, I realized that I had my little piece on the side there where it met, and it just didn't look right to me. So, that's the beauty when you use like the clay molds or really any of the molds. If you use the uh, quick and thick, it just makes it so much easier to peel off of there and put it exactly the way that you want to. Now, here I am again using the color beadboard, and I'm going to paint these beautiful flowers that's all around my bunny, and then I'm going to go ahead around the backside of the bunny again and paint him. Now, you'll notice that I swapped to this smaller brush. It just made it so much easier to get around the ins and outs that I needed to where I put the molds. And also, I did not use the sponge on the back of this egg. I just used a regular brush to paint it. I've got my Dixie Belle Clear Wax. It's called the Best Dang Wax, and I have had this wax for over two years, guys. I just felt that it would be best to put down a clear wax because I wanted to use my really watered down Waverly Antique Wax that I have, and I always like to put down my clear wax first because it makes it easier to wipe back that brown wax or dark wax, whichever color I'm using. And basically what I did 
was use that watered down antique wax. I think I have probably about 10% of actual antique wax in that bottle and the other 90% of it is water. It's really, really watered down. And so I went around, I didn't really like the look of that, so I'm going to use my gold leaf again, the rub and buff, and just kind of go around it with my finger. There were some areas where I felt like I put too much of the gold wax, so I just used that white that was still on my brush to kind of dab over it, and it evens it out. I did decide to go ahead and use a little blue velvet ribbon that I had gotten from Timu. It's just the ribbon and I made like a little figure eight bow. I placed that on the very top of this one because remember this one's an ornament. And then I put a simple little button in the middle. I wanted to make each one just a little different and I hope you like it. If you stuck with me through this whole video, I just want to thank you so much for coming and sitting a spell with me and crafting and having a good time today. I just figured that somebody could use a little bump in their decoupage game and these would be so beautiful on your Easter table when all your family comes over. And don't forget, if you haven't subscribed yet to my channel, I would love for you to hit that little red button and become a part of our family. Also, if you would, give me a big thumbs up, that's the like button, and also leave me a comment because all these things tremendously help out with my channel. Now guys, I will see you back here real soon, Lord willing, and that creek don't rise. Did you know that if you are on a mobile phone or an iPad, you can click right here on my face to subscribe to my channel? You sure can! Also, if you enjoyed this content, I have another video right here. If you click on it, as soon as this one's over with, it'll take you right there. God bless you.